Hey, good morning guys, brothers and sisters here in East Tennessee or whoever might see this video today. I really just want to come to you with a word of encouragement this morning. And uh, it's coming out of 2 Timothy. And the Lord has really put 2 Timothy back on my heart again. I did a study of it earlier in the year. But he's bringing it back to me right now because really we're in a season of life where I believe that brothers and sisters of the faith that we are being called to toe the line. We are being called into the front lines of battle, whether it be in our jobs, in our homes, in the supermarket, wherever we go. Right now is the time for us to really be standing arm in arm and rebuilding the spiritual city that we live in. But something that really jumped out to me really fast this morning when I got into 2 Timothy that I never paid attention to, and I believe that it's because the Lord wanted me to receive this word today. And here's, here's Timothy. He's living in a world where there's chaos. Uh, Nero had just burnt down Rome. He put the blame on Christians. Christians are being burnt at the stake. Uh, the world's chaos. And all of the people that were walking along beside of Paul, walking along beside Timothy, they're fleeing, they're leaving the church, they're turning their back on him. And here he is, kind of hopeless, and uh, he's having to steward the church of Ephesus. But in Paul's letter that he writes to him, he encourages him of something that I feel Holy Spirit is telling me that really pertains to our world today and our situations. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, Paul writes, I thank God whom I serve as my forefathers did with a clear conscience as day and night. I constantly remember you in my prayers, recalling your tears. I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I have been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives also in you. And what really jumps out to me right now is that, that Paul knew Timothy's mother and grandmother and that these women had such a level of faith that he mentions it right here. The, the word that he first wrote to encourage Timothy during these times of chaos is remember your mother and her faith for God. And remember your grandmother. So right there, I'm seeing his grandmother, his mother, and him. Three generations of faith that first Timothy is being reminded of. I don't see a single mention of Timothy's father. Now, that's just... I guess maybe I'm speculating here. Like, was Timothy's father in his life? But I know that his mom and his grandmother were. And that they were... They had such a level of faith in who God was and what God could do that Paul reminds Timothy of that. So I just feel encouraged right now to speak to all you mothers out there, uh, widows, single moms, whether you've been through divorce, whatever. Women of faith who have continued for years to pour into their children to fight for them, to fight through their abuse, fight through their addiction, whatever it has been that has had you up sleepless nights, pacing floors, on your knees, in your prayer closet, in your circles of influence, wherever it has been that you have just had these moments of life of just pulling your hair out, or, uh, or just feeling broken or defeated, I want to encourage you that your faith, your extreme faith that you have had is sowing seeds into future generations. You are sowing those seeds into your sons and daughters, which are therefore sowing it into their sons and daughters. So I want to encourage you today to hold your heads high. But I also want to encourage you uh, women out there today that if you feel like you have lost your voice, whether it be in your own home, in your church, in your community, I want to encourage you that the words that you speak of the goodness of God matters. Speaking of His wonders, of His signs for generations across generations, they matter. And I want to encourage you to speak out today. 
I feel that we are stepping into a season where everybody is praying for this fresh wind of God in our region. And I just feel in my spirit this morning that there needs to be not so much an uprising. I don't know that that's the word I want to use. But there needs to be a fresh wind of women who have been silenced, maybe by broken men in their lives, or silenced by fear, to speak out. Because also in this same, in this same first passage of 2 Timothy, it says, For God did not give us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power and love and a sound mind, or self-discipline. So I want to encourage you women today that if you have a spirit of fear on you, let go of it because that's not of God. That God's ministry for you women comes from power and of love and a sound mind, but also self-discipline. So I want to encourage you today to speak out. Speak out into your children. Speak out into your community. And allow Holy Spirit to give you such a power that when you speak out, that generations are going to be changed the same way that they did in Timothy's life. We only grow stronger when we all grow stronger. So women, I want to encourage you to be empowered by the Holy Spirit today. Be empowered to speak out His truth. Be empowered to not walk in fear. Be empowered to come together unified in one love, one faith, one mind, one power. And that is the power of Yahweh today. As the world grows more chaotic every day, Women, there is going to be a strength that comes upon our region when you begin to take your authority, take your authority in your family, take your authority in your church, take your authority in our community. And ladies, I am so encouraged to see what comes from all of you when you do so. Lord, I just pray strength over my sisters today. I pray encouragement over my sisters today, the mothers, the grandmothers Father, the young reinforcements in this region that you are building up today, Father. I pray that you will strengthen women to speak into the lives of everyone that are around them, Father. Lord, I just come against the spirit of fear or silence uh, in any woman's life that may hear this today, Father. I pray that women will continue to view their children, Father, as reinforcements in the kingdom and that they have such a power and authority to speak into their lives today. Father, I praise you for the women that are in my life. I praise you. For women like Donna Gotzi, who took a chance on me. I praise you for women like Linda Honeycutt and Effie Giles. I praise you for women like Denise Hendricks that have just loved me in moments in my life where I just felt broken. I praise you for the women of Lone Oak Christian Church. I praise you for women like Christine Anderson. I praise you for women like my mom, Marie Turley. I praise you for women like Sabrina who challenged me to be better than I was and to not just settle for less. I praise you for women like Sherry Marion that always pour joy into my life. I praise you for women like Miss Lisa who have just the sweetest conversations about the Lord and that we get to look at things from two different perspectives, Lord. I praise you for these women because they have made me stronger. And Lord, I just pray blessings over their lives today. Lord, I just... uh. I just ask that you would just empower women in this region to do mighty things today, Lord, and that you would bring men along beside them to make them stronger. I love you, Lord, and I praise your holy name. Amen. Be encouraged today, women. You are strong. You are mighty. You are women of valor. You are courageous. And I just want to see mighty things come from all of you today. Thank you so much. Have an awesome day.